Hi, welcome to Wonder Tools. Today's post is about how AI can help with video editing, which is now easier than ever before, thanks to new web-based editing tools like Kapwing. I'm sharing today a demo session I hosted with Julia, Kapwing's co-founder and CEO. She demos how to capitalize on Kapwing's AI to quickly repurpose a long video, like a Zoom recording, into short, shareable social video clips with something called Repurpose Studio, and also how to translate a video, voice included, into another language. Here's the demo. Hi, I'm Julia. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Kapwing. And today I'm going to show how you can use Kapwing's Repurpose Studio to turn long form videos into short form shareable highlights. So yeah, marketers know this can be a really cumbersome task. You have a lot of sort of an archive of long form video footage. How do you turn that into things that can help you grow an audience and that are meaningful to your audience, your existing audience? So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen to show you a little more of how the Reaper Studio works. So Kapwing is a fully online video editor. It helps with any kind of social media task, like adding captions or translating videos. But our, what I'm showing today is our new Repurpose Studio. Um, here I am signed into the Kapwing workspace, and I'm going to get started just by clicking Repurpose Content. Here you can upload a video. Um, I'm going to go ahead and paste a long form webinar, a 33 minute like podcast episode that we did for YouTube. This is our content marketing team. Um, it's a side-by-side -side video, so two faces side-by-side, -side, um, two people talking to each other. And I'm going to go ahead and click Generate Clips here. What this product does is it uses AI to identify highlights in your video. So really useful insights that you know are coming out of the video itself. It starts out by transcribing the video that you've given it um, and then uses that to find kind of those like AI moments. And it also automatically adds captions and also centers on the speaker in the video. Just for the sake of this demo, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and jump the line. I already have in this other tab here, the finished uh, version of this uh, repurpose studio job. Uh, so I'll go ahead and show you what the output looks like so that we can dive right in. So you can see here, uh, there are lots of different highlights that have been uh, pulled out of the video on different topics. Um, and you can read the text of the transcript itself and watch the video in the video preview. Creating a video strategy, if you haven't fit that into a larger content strategy, I think is setting you up or a larger, you know, broader marketing strategy is setting yourself up for. So I think that this is a really helpful tool for browsing sort of the insights from your video. You can see that the various speakers, one on the left and one on the right, have been centered in the frame. Uh, also subtitles here on the bottom, which I can change the styling of um, using this subtitles tool. And I can also change the aspect ratio, for example, if I wanted to publish on a different platform or have a different size. What do you think of our podcast? <laughs> Well, a long time listener, first time guest. So there's lots of different uh, things that get highlighted in the transcript. And if you ever want to go in and make any adjustments or changes to your transcript, you can do that just by clicking edit as project. And this will open up that video in the fully featured video editor. And from here, you can do other things like remove filler words that are highlighted in the video just by selecting the text from the transcript and deleting that section from the timeline. You can also, you know, make other changes to the transcript of the video script and listen to those changes as you go. As well, just, you know, you would make a video and then... And yeah, all of that is really simple to use. We pride ourselves on our video editor being really accessible to everyone on your team. Um, you can also make visual changes here in the editor, like adding logos and moving things around. All of Kapling's embedded tools are accessible to you here. And Kapling is a fully functional video editor. So it's really useful for, you know, getting to uh, your video look the way that you want it to every single time. After you're done uh, with all of your edits, you can click export video or export project to get the version of your, pro of your project to share on social media. Um, you can also export directly from the Repurpose Studio just by clicking on that export button. And then you literally have a shareable video ready to go for social. So that is how you use the Repurpose Studio. It really can help you with turning long form podcast episodes, video podcasts, interviews, Zoom recordings, and all sorts of B2B thought leadership marketing material into these short form videos that are perfect for LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok. It's not good for videos that uh, have a 
lot of background music or where the transcript is not the feature of the video. For example, if you upload like, you know, a football game to Kapwing, you won't be able to identify the highlights in the football game because the highlights are not based on the text or the transcript. And uh, it's also not good for very short videos, like videos that are shorter than two minutes, because it'll only probably find one or two highlights for you. Although we're working on that, trying to make it even useful for like videos that are uh, one to two minutes long. So those are my tips on kind of how you can turn your archive of marketing content into uh, full content for social media. Um, hopefully it can help your team. And we're also investing a lot here. So I'm really open to feedback if you discover something that doesn't work well for you. That's a repurpose studio. Thanks, Joya. It's terrific. And in terms of the time savings, I mean, in my own experience, it can often take a huge amount of time to edit a video into small pieces. What's your sense of how long it takes with this versus how long it might take for people to generate, you know, several clips if they were to do this manually? So I think that if you do it manually yourself, what often ends up happening is you open the video and you listen to it on like 4x speed, like trying to find the moments that are the most interesting to you. And depending on the length of your video, that can take, you know, 10 or 20 minutes just to like find the moments in the video that are interesting enough to share. And also you have to be like, you know, you have to have a point of view on like which moments are the most interesting. It's hard to get ideas from the script of the video about sort of like which parts you should feature, or which might be the most relevant for your audience. Um, in comparison, Kapwing, as long as you, you know, once you uh, upload your video, it takes, it's much, much faster. It, you know, it just takes about a minute of browsing through these clips, deciding which ones you want to create to find that section of the video that you want to edit. And yeah, after you're able to identify the section of the video, doing all of your post-production edits, since Kapwing is optimized for social media, it can save a lot of time there. So I would say it turns kind of like 10 minute task into a one minute task in terms of finding your edits. And it can cut your editing time in half if you use Kapwing smart tools, like removing filler words automatically, using the clean audio tools to enhance the audio of the video. All of those are like available here in Kapwing uh, directly. So you don't need to go to another tool in order to optimize your video for your social. That's great. Thank you. Let's see the um, the dubbing um, part that you're working on too, because I think that's also really, really interesting. Okay, great. So um, yeah, we're also working on a new feature around making it easier to translate videos into a different language. And we already have one of the most popular suites for translating the captions of your videos, the closed captions. But this new dubbing suite will actually translate the audio of your video into a different language. It's pretty magical. It, it actually clones the voice of the speaker. It tries to get the, um, you know, uh, it tries to localize the translation and get the timings right such that the video sounds right to, to makes it sound like you're actually just speaking a different language. To dub a video in Kapwing, um, you can go ahead and um, create a new project and either pull your video in from um, YouTube, upload a video, or if you want to record a video directly within the product, you can record your screen or your camera or your audio. And the, I'm going to, in this case, just pull in this short video of my friend. Um, she sent it to me. She's speaking Russian in the video. And we're going to dub this video back into English here. Привет, меня зовут Люба, и я работаю над новым... So I don't speak Russian, but if I wanted to understand this video, I can translate it back into English so that we can take a look. Um, the first thing I'll do here is I'm going to go ahead and auto-generate the transcript. This video, the original language is Russian. I want to translate this video into English. And so I'm going to go ahead and transcribe and generate a translation of the video here. All of this is using top tier vendors for both transcription and translation. So and we're constantly working on improvements to the sort of to the underlying algorithm to make sure that transcriptions and translations are more accurate. And yeah, well, this is going, but going here, you can also see that all of the subtitle styles are here on the okay. left. Um, you can save your subtitle styles so that your subtitles appear at the same time, uh, the same way every single time you make a video, which can be a huge time savings, especially for um, a team. Now, this friend of mine is another founder. She is the founder of a dating app, a new dating app called Paloma, which you can see from the translation of the video. And I can make other small tweaks to it. I don't just have to accept the AI suggestion. I can, for example, change the way her name is spelled. 
I can uh, uh, make other changes to punctuation, etc. Uh, but you can see the translation here is pretty accurate and uh, does a pretty good job of explaining what she's saying in the video. Now, this I've just translated the text here. I haven't actually translated the audio yet, so I'm going to do that too. Um, here under the smart tools, I'm going to go ahead and translate the audio. I'm going to clone the original voice and translate into English. You can see there's other accents supported here, but I'm going to choose the U.S. I'm going to clone the original voice. I could also choose from other premium text-to-speech voices. Automatically. But in this case, I'm just going to clone her voice and I'm going to go ahead and click translate audio. So yeah, what this will do is it will clone her voice and use that clone to generate a synthetic voiceover and then try and time out that voiceover to match the original timing of the video. Um, so we can listen here. Hello, my name is Bluba, and I'm working on a new application for Dating Paloma. We record videos of couples talking about love for Instagram. I also have a friend whose name is Julia and for whom I, I'm recording this short video. Thank you. So you can see that's not quite perfect. You know, sometimes there might be other little adjustments you might want to make. Like, for example, maybe I want to slow this down a tiny bit to better match where her, she stops talking. And all of that is possible to do within the video. So this is really useful, especially for um, teams that are making um, faceless video, like training videos or PowerPoint videos for customers. It's also really helpful for um, HR and people operations teams that are translating videos from multiple different offices and multiple different locales. Um, the nice thing about Kapwing is that it's shareable and collaborative at every stage. So you can send the draft to HR partners who can then who can then review the translation, the local, localized version, and generate a voiceover themselves and make other tweaks to the video if needed um, in the product. So this, of course, is just like a silly dem demonstration video, but you can use this software to translate long videos, videos that you use for uh, training and for internal communications. It's also really useful for like emergency or urgent communication from an executive to a different or from a leader to um, to a whole organization. And we want to make all of those easier for uh, organizations to be able to translate and reach multiple audiences across multiple languages. So yeah, that is how you use our, our dubbing tool. And we're also continuing to work on lots of improvements to the dubbing tool around background noise and timing of the videos, translation quality, et cetera. So I hope that this is um, helpful for people who localize video content uh, and look forward to more more improvements to come do you expect people to use it it's really it re looks really powerful and 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 useful do you expect creators who are used to creating in one language to increasingly use this and other tools like it to reach people who they couldn't otherwise reach in other countries and other languages do you think this is a way for people to expand their audiences uh, outside of the kind of functional context that you mentioned you know do you expect individual creators to, to be using this? And have you seen them already doing that? Do you think that's something that will grow? Yes, definitely. A few like major use cases that we see already are coaches or teachers that use, that translate their learning materials or their coaching materials into other languages. Um, that is really useful for just expanding your reach, possible clients that you can reach or uh, students who are hoping to, you know, uh, learn the course also. So yeah, learning materials is a big use case. Uh, I also expect as this technology gets better and better for it to become more common for creators to start other channels on TikTok and on YouTube um, for different languages. So to start a Spanish language or a, you know, an Arabic um, language channel. I think that those like that's prohibitively difficult now, but as it becomes easier to translate both the video and the text of, of your social media posts into different languages, I think that that will also be something that creators want to control, customize, sort of be able to tweak before they republish. And and uh, using a tool like Kaplan can give you that sort of full customization and also make it you know much easier and cheaper to um, to do. So those are two areas where I think obviously Hollywood is already localizing their videos for other audiences. Um, we see, you know, in with foreign videos being dubbed or added, have dubbed subtitles. And I think that that will become more common for YouTube more generally also. If for someone speaking English, as an example, to take as a use case, how many different languages can they sort of translate their voice to and cl essentially clone their voice into how many different languages and, and does it span all types of languages or are there some language blocks that are still kind of hard to hard to do? 
Yeah, I think we support 76 different languages right now. Uh, so um, I think that's the sort of breadth of the languages that people can choose. You can see some of them here. Um, just this morning, I did a demo with a customer who's translating from English into Lithuanian. And I was happy to say that we do, in fact, support Lithuanian. So yeah, those are, there are 76 different languages on here. You know, there's definitely some we don't support now that we would like to. We just depend on our transcription vendors, you know, the AI companies that are actually working on the models to produce translation and transcription. We rely on them to just expand their support over time. And what's your sense about using the captions with the translation? Are people, so if you're dubbing, are you putting the caption in that secondary language, I guess, to match the dub? Or are you putting the original language in there? Or, or is there no need for the caption? Well, I, yeah, it's in my opinion, that sort of almost every video is better with captions, but some people are uploading their final video to like a learning management system or to another social platform that already has automatic captions turned on for most videos or where they want to upload the videos as closed or I'm sorry, upload the captions as closed captions. For example, YouTube, you can upload an SRT and that will, um, you know, YouTube supports showing the captions on the video by SRT. So um, I would say it's a mixed bag on whether or not, um, you know, creators want to show those captions at the bottom um, just depends on kind of the quality of the dub and the quality of the captions themselves. Mm -hmm. Cool. These are really, really great. Um, they're exciting. I've been, I've been really appreciating the, the um, repurpose myself. Um, in terms of looking ahead for 2024, the AI stuff is moving really, really quickly. You've added a whole bunch of things recently already. Um, what's kind of, what are some of the things you're thinking about next, or what are the the new things people could look for and complaining in months to head months to come? Yeah, so for repurposed content, we're focusing a lot on um, a few things. One is just making the quality of the highlights that are suggested even better. So we're doing a lot of sort of original AI research to really get you the best, you know, the best possible highlights from the video. That includes things like, you know, automatically removing filler words, choosing like a really promising hook or like first sentence that is going to be really compelling and just, you know, increasing the diversity and quality of the segments that are chosen. So that's a big area of focus for us. In addition, we're adding a bunch of sort of automatic editing features right here to Repurpose Studio. So you can just do them automatically for all of your clips. Um, for example, we're going to add clean audio so that you can just enhance the audio of your videos automatically. And we're going to add a few other things here so that you can just do literally do them automatically in one click for all of your videos just to speed up the editing process. And yeah, we have some more features to come uh, on our Repurpose Studio, things that we hope to be kind of delightful and fun to make videos even more engaging. Um, things like, you know, Zoom cuts or overlays or emojis that can help to make your video even higher quality, enhanced uh, visuals, etc. So that's some um, on the Repurpose Studio for dubbing. Uh, there's a lot of hard problems to work on in the dubbing space that we're still focused on. Uh, we want to support multiple speakers really cleanly. Uh, we are working on background sound preservation. So making sure that, you know, if you have background music in your video, it's, it's still there in the translated dubbed version. And we, yeah, have lots of translation quality projects ongoing also. So those are kind of some of the various things you'll look, look out for on dubbing. Uh, still kind of in a hidden place because we're still working on sort of some of the timing research, but we are really excited to really offer like full translation of the video um, soup to nuts. And then for people who are used to using Adobe Premiere or Final Cut Pro, other kind of desktop-based editing tools, it might be uh, a transition to using a web-based tool and the web-based tools now work really, really well. Uh, but I'm curious if there are some constraints people should think about in terms of using it on a Chromebook or using it on one type of laptop versus another. Uh, presumably, it's not going to work on mobile phones or, or tablets anytime soon, I would imagine. Uh, but are there any other kind of considerations in terms of what you know, what devices people are using for for Copwing? Well, I'm happy to say that Copwing does work on mobile, um, and oh, it does. Uh, works just on your like on your mobile device. This is just kind of an emulation, of course, of what your phone might look like. But uh, we do support all of our editing tools here on mobile, also. So. It's, some of them are harder to use. You know, if you want to review all of your subtitles, for example, it can be hard, a little harder to do yeah. on a small screen. But yeah, just because of the size. This is really useful for just like needing to make quick edits on the go. It's all possible hmm. here. I do think it's a transition for people who, uh, you know, use Adobe Premiere because there's some things that you'll need to relearn. 
Uh, there are some things that Queen doesn't support. For example, we do support keyframes, which are sort of like more sophisticated animation types, um, but we don't have like as powerful keyframes or animation suite as Adobe Premiere does. So if you wanted to, you know, quickly make or like sort of gradually make this drop to the bottom of the video, you know, I think it's, uh, or Queen has a lot less sophistication with our keyframing than, yeah, than Premiere does. So I guess that's one thing to be aware of. You can see a little bit here on how that works. Uh, yeah. We do have a lot of sort of other editing tools built in for social media. So I think it's, if you are someone who produces in Adobe Premiere, you can still find Kipling useful for adding captions, um, getting your videos ready for social, adding post-production tools and collaborating with your, or adding post-production changes and collaborating with your team. So yeah, I think that, you know, our hope is that eventually we I mean, add enough value that people are convinced to switch, but uh, it's also a useful tool, even if you're using both together. Great. Thank you so much. It's really it's really exciting to see how much people can do, how quickly they can do it now, and how easily they can do it, even if they don't necessarily have training. Video editing has often been sort of in the realm of the professional or the expert, and now I think you're kind of helping make it a little bit more accessible for, for people who don't necessarily have the expertise to, to work in more advanced tools or more complicated tools. Yeah, that's definitely our hope. And, you know, we've done case studies on our customers, on our clients who have, you know, for their marketing teams have sp sped up video editing production by 50% in terms of output. So just on sheer output, what they can produce with their current team, they, you know, can just produce a lot more video using something like Kapwing. So that's the kinds of outcomes that we really celebrate and want to, you know, hope to see in our, in our customers. That's great. So that's a quick look at Kapwing. I Thank uh, Julia for the conversation and the demo. And I'm curious what you think of it and how you find web-based video editing and whether AI in that realm is useful for you. Thanks for listening or watching this Wonder Tools piece and look forward to hearing from you soon.